Hey guys, welcome back to another A-Level Maths revision video. In this video today, I'm combining the first year and second year material of Exodus, so a bit of a mix. Um, but hopefully these questions shouldn't be too bad. Um, so let's take a look at what we've got here. So this first question is a second year question because we've got 3D vectors, so we've got the K component included as well. So question two here, let's have a look at solving it. So part A then, we want to find the position vector of D and d is the point such that the vector ab is equal to the vector bb. Well the first thing I can work out then is given that we've got the position vectors of a and b, I can work out the vector ab. And I can do that simply by working out here um, or using the position vector of the point b minus the position vector of the point a. So that's going to be 4 minus 2, 3 minus, so then the point a here or the position vector for point A, 2, 3, minus 4. So just working this out individually then, 4 minus 2, that gives us 2, minus 2 minus 3 is minus 5, and then finally 3 minus minus 4 gives us 7 there. So we can also write that out as 2i uh, minus 5j plus 7k, so that's the vector AB. But we know D is the point such that the vector AB is equal to the vector BD, so in other words, we also know the vector BD is equal to 2i minus 5j plus 7k. So in that case then, we can use this fact, and if we just say, for example, we don't know the position vector for the point D, that's what we're going to work out. So let's just take um, a generic example here. So if we say D um, has the position vector ai plus bj plus uh, ck. We can use this then, um, again just using the same idea here, the position vector at the point D minus the position vector at the point B should be equal to this. So doing that, that's going to give us, so B to D, that's simply going to be A minus 2 Oh, sorry, um, where's B? A minus 4. So that's B there. A minus 4. Yeah, then be B minus minus 2, so that's plus 2. And then finally it's going to be C, because that's this component here for K, minus the K component for the position vector at B, which is 3. So that's going to be C minus 3. Okay. But we know this, so this first part here is equal to 2. We know our k component, or sorry, our j component is equal to minus 5. And then we know our k component finally is equal to 7. So all we need to do now is solve these three linear equations here. But each one just has a single variable, so a minus 4 is equal to 2. So in that case, a minus 4 is equal to 2. That means a is equal to 6 b plus 2 is equal to minus 5 so in that case b is just simply equal to minus 7 and then finally c minus 3 is equal to 7 so in that case c must be equal to 10 there okay so if we write out um, d then using our three values then what we get here for the position vector of d is 6i minus 7j plus 10k there. Okay, that's our position vector of d. So that's part a done. Let's have a go at tackling part b then. So we just clear all this first. Well, we're given that the magnitude of the vector ac is equal to 4. Is equal to 4. Find the value of a. So, the first thing I can do here is work out the vector AC. Obviously, it'll be in terms of A, because we don't know the value of A, so we're going to have that unknown in there. But let's do that first. So that's going to be the position vector at the point C minus the position vector at the point A. So that's going to be A, 5, and then minus 2, minus 2, 3, and then minus 4. Okay. So what would that give us? That would give us a minus 2i 
because we don't know what a is just yet. We'll also have 5 minus 3, so that'll be plus 2j. And then finally, minus 2 minus minus 4, so that's minus 2 plus 4, and we get plus 2k there. Okay, so that there is the vector AC. Now, the magnitude of the vector AC is equal to 4, so let's start looking at the magnitude of this. So, that's going to be the square root of each component squared. So, a minus 2 all squared plus 2 squared, and then finally another 2 squared here. Okay, just square in each component, and then we take the square root. But we know this is equal to 4, but remember this first square root, if the full expression is equal to 4, then this must be equal to the square root of 16. Okay, simplifying here. This is the square root of a minus 2 all squared. Um, this would be 4 and this would be 4. So in total we've got plus 8 here. And this is still equal to root 16. So in other words, this part here must be equal to 8. Okay? Because this full expression here has to be equal to 8. Uh, well, the full expression has to be equal to root 16. So this other part must be equal um, to 8. There's two ways of doing it. You can square both sides here and work from there. Or like I've just said, you can consider the fact that this is equal to 8. I think the nice way is just to square both sides here. So what we've got then is a minus 2 all squared plus 8 is equal to 16. Subtract the 8 off both sides. So you get a minus 2 all squared is equal to 8, which is the expression that we were just mentioning here. This part has to be equal to 8. Um, solving this now, so I can square root both sides, so that's going to be a minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 8. We want this um, really in its simplest form, so if I simplify this root 8 first, so root 8, that's equal to root 4, root 2, and root 4 is equal to 2, so this is 2, root 2, okay, so a minus 2 is equal to plus or minus 2 root 2. So to get a on its own, we just need to add 2 to both sides. So this gives us a equals 2 plus or minus 2 root 2. Okay, now we want the value of a. So that's singular, so we should only obtain one value for a. Whereas at this point here, we've got this plus or minus, which would mean we have two solutions. But the key is actually given to you in the question that a is less than zero. Okay, so a is negative. So in that case, we only want a equals 2 minus 2 root 2. Because that would be negative. 2 plus 2 root 2, that would be um, positive. So we don't want that solution. So the only solution we want then is a equals 2 minus 2 root 2. Okay, so that's our first question. The next question then, much easier, a lot less work involved, um, will probably take us a minute at most, um, is this 2D vector question. So again we've got two more position vectors for the respective points. Part A, question 3 here, we just want to find the vector AB. So the vector AB, well that's going to be the position vector at the point B minus the position vector at the point A. So that will be minus 5 and then minus 2, minus 4 and then minus 5. So we're looking at each one individual here, minus 5 minus 4 is minus 9, and then minus 2 minus minus 5, so that's minus 2, plus 5 will give us 3. So that would be minus 9i plus 3j. So that's just the vector AB, nothing else we can do there. And then for part B, we just want to find the magnitude of AB, the length. So remember, we just take the square root of each term squared. So nice and easy to work out. So we're taking the square of minus 9, but obviously if you square this, it'll be positive anyway. So that's just the same as doing 9 squared plus 3 squared. So squaring each term individually, taking the square root. So we need to simplify this here. So 9 squared is 81. 3 squared is 9, so that's root 81, um, or the square root of 81 plus 9, so that's the square root of 90. 
Now we need to give our answer as a simplified third, so that means here we can simplify this. And it simplifies really nice. That would be root 9 times root 10. And root 9, remember, is equal to 3. So this is 3 root 10. Okay. And that's that question done. Nice easy four marks are in the bag. The next question, a bit more work. Again, back to 3D vectors. So we've got the sketch of this triangle ABC. We know AB. So let me just um, annotate you here. So this vector here, that's 2i plus 3j plus k. And then we also have the vector from B to C. Okay. That's i minus 9j plus 3k. We want to show that the angle BAC, so that's B to A, so that's this angle here. So we want to show that this angle here is 105.9 degrees. 105.9 degrees. So one decimal place. Now, the first thing that jumps out at me here is we've got no angles given to us. We're asked to show that, so we're not, we're not actually given it. We have no angles, but we know the vector here. We know the vector here. So we can use that to work out this vector here, the vector A to C. Okay? So how would we work that out? Well, that would simply be, so if we just do it up here, so the vector AC would simply be A to B, or the vector A to B, plus the vector from B to C. Okay? If we work that out, we've got the vector AC. And then, working out the magnitude of each of these vectors, We've got an, a respective length, and then we can use some trigonometry. Because we've got no angles, we're going to use cosine rule here. So, let's have a look at this one. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the vector AC, as we've just mentioned. So that's the vector AV, plus the vector BC here. So doing that, that's going to be 2, 3, 1, plus 1, minus 9, Okay, simplifying this here, 2 plus 1 is 3, uh, minus 9 plus 3 is minus 6, and then 1 plus 3 is 4. So in other words, that's 3i minus 6j plus 4k here. Okay, so that's a to c. It's also worth knowing here which sides we're calling what. Now they've labelled the triangle a here, so I'm going to call my little side a here. Um, or this side, little a, I should say. Um, this is b, the opposite side here will be little b, and same again here, if this is c, this will be little c. Okay, and that's important for when we're doing um, the cosine rule. Um, obviously, we're going to have to take this as cos a, then, in this case. So, just so we've got that labelled there. So, now, let's start putting everything together. Don't forget, we need the lengths here. We can't use the vectors, we need the lengths if we're using the cosine rule. So it doesn't matter the order you work them out. So in that case, if we work out, say, um, the length of C, that would be the magnitude of A to B. So A to B then in this case. So the magnitude of A to B. So A to B is 2i plus 3j plus k. So we're going to square each one of them and then take the square root. So 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 1 squared. So that's going to be 4 plus the 9, plus the 1, so that's equal to the square root of 40, so that's the length C. Um, let's just work out B now, so for some reason I'm working backwards, um, but that would be the length of A to C. So what will that be? Well that will be 3 squared, plus minus 6 squared, or just plus 6 squared, and then finally plus 4 squared. And again, that'd be 9 plus 36 plus 16 there. Okay. Add all that up, that'll give you root 61. And then finally, let's work out A here. So that'll be the magnitude of B to C. Okay, just using your sketch to see that there clearly. So that'll just be 1 squared plus 9 squared plus 3 squared. And that will simply give us a uh, square root of 91. Okay. Um, I'm not quite sure why I didn't write the, the simplification down there, but hopefully that's nice and clear. 
So now that we've got the three lengths, all we need to do here is apply um, cosine rule. So we write that out in full. So we're looking for cos a here. That's the angle we want to find. Cos a. So the formula for that would be b squared plus c squared minus a squared divided by 2bc. Okay. Now we've got everything we need here. It's just a matter of plugging everything in. So cos a is simply equal then to b squared, where b is root 61. That's root 61 squared plus c squared, where c squared would be 14, because c is root 14. I'll write everything out in full for now, though. <coughs> so that's root 14 squared. And then we subtract a squared, so that would be root 91 all squared. Just for clarity here, it doesn't matter which side of the triangles you label B and C, but it does matter which way you label A. Um, so A should obviously be the corresponding angle to my cosine of A here. Um, if you call it cos B, then the length B to C should be B. So just be careful for that. And then we divide this by 2BC, so that's 2 times um, B, which is root 61 times c which is root 14. Okay, <coughs> plug all that into your calculator and you should get minus 0 0.273 so on and so on. So if cos a is equal to this, to get the inverse of this then we're just going to take cos inverse. So cos inverse, put the answer in here so it'd be cos inverse of answer on your calculator but just so it's clear what I'm doing taking cos inverse of this expression here and if you plug that into your calculator what you should get here is 105.9 degrees then <coughs> okay to one decimal place okay and there we go so a bit of a problem solving question there um, quite common on the new spec and then finally if we take a look at this last question then um, again, another very easy question to finish with. So we've got two points, A and B, and we've got their respective position vectors. So part A, pretty standard this now by this point, we want to find the vector AB. So that would again just be the position vector of the point B minus the position vector of point A. So that's going to be A3 minus um, 3 minus 7. So like always, the only thing to be careful of here is a minus of a minus. So 8 minus 3 is 5. 3 minus minus 7, so that's the same as plus. That would be 10 there. Okay. So that's everything okay so far. And that's just our answer there. For part B then, to find the magnitude of this, like always, we're just going to square each individual term. So this is 5i plus 10j. So we square each individual term and then take the square root um, of the sum, we've got our answer. So the square root, 5 squared plus 10 squared, so that would be the square root of 25 plus 100. So that would be the square root of 125. And then at this point we just need to get the answers a simplified third and we're done. So square root of 125, hopefully it jumps out that we can simplify this as root 25 times square root of 5. And root 25 is equal to 5. So our final answer is 5 root 5 for the magnitude of AB. Okay, and there we have it. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope this has helped more as an introduction to vectors. I'm, I might plan on doing another um, vector video looking at some tough questions. But if there's anything that's unclear or anything you'd like to see, again, like always, just leave a comment down below. Cheers.